Bam, and there you have it. Now you have your own unusual options volume scanner in Python. Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Gitbags, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get unusual options data in Python. Now this could be useful if you're looking at flow and you're trying to get some additional market awareness. And of course, if you're building scanners. So let's go ahead and pop open our trusty Google, let's Google search Polygon API docs. We're gonna be using Polygon there. Here we can click into the website. I'm gonna put a link to my playlist here. If you've never used the API before, it can help you get started there. Let's click into the REST API docs, and then we can click into our client library here, Python. And then once you're here on the GitHub, you can click into the read the docs. Here. And then we can just click into getting started here. Next, we're gonna Google search bar chart unusual options, and then we can scroll down here to barchart.com. So this page here is unusual options volume, but let's take a look at unusual options activity here. And then we'll use this page for the reference of the data that we want to pull for our app. So first on the script, we'll make sure we pip install Polygon API client, then we'll start importing our modules. So from Polygon, we'll import a REST client, which is straight out of the documentation. And then we have next our no results error. I'll show you where we use that later. Then we're just importing daytime here. We got pandas. And then I've got some additional pandas kind of calendar daytime functions here. So what I'm doing here is I'm importing my Polygon API key. You can paste your API key directly as a string here. And then we're going to use that. So in this line here, we're just creating our client object. And we're using this REST client function and passing in our API key. Then what I'm doing here is I'm creating an empty list where we're gonna store our option data. And then I'm creating a list of these three tickers here that we're gonna to use to collect our stock and option data. Now here comes the fun part. We're creating a for loop through each of our equity tickers here. And we're gonna do all of the following for each ticker. So first thing here, I'm just printing out a note that says we're gathering data for the first ticker here, I. And then we're gonna use this polygon function here, get snapshot all. We're gonna set our parameter to stocks and then we're gonna pass in our stock ticker so that we can get snapshot data for this first ticker. So if you wanna check that function out on the Python docs, you just click under snapshot here and then we have get snapshot all and we'll just pass in our market type and our ticker. So I'll we'll go ahead and just run this code here so we can kind of follow along. So we're gonna pass in stocks here and then our ticker name, and then that's gonna give us our snapshot data. So you can see all the data here. And if you've watched my snapshot video for Polygon, you see how to work with all the data. So here, all we're gonna do is assign a closing price. And then here we have our closing price for Apple. So up next, this block of code here, we're creating a list and then we're going through this for loop here. If you look under the Python documentation here under getting started and you scroll down a bit, you can see this block looks very similar here. We're just changing out this function to list option contracts. So what this block here is gonna do is just gonna go ahead and get all of our options contract data. So if we run that and then we look under contract data, we can see here we have a bunch of options contract objects. If you've seen my options data video here, I'll link it here. You can see how to work through a lot of that data as well. So now that we've gathered all of our option contract data, we want to dig down into each individual option contract. So we're going to use another for loop here that goes through our contract data. And what I'm doing here is J is going to be our contract object. So all we're going to be doing here is just going through the first 20 contracts that are available in that list and do the following. So for our example here, I'm just going to set J equal to the first contract in the list so we can run kind of through this example. So for the first ticker, we're going to grab out the option ticker. We're going to grab the contract type caller put and then we're going to grab the strike price. So if you enter the names of the variables, now you can see the option ticker, the contract type and the strike price here. So for this next block of code, similar to what we've done for our get snapshot all up here, we're going to get a snapshot of an option and we're going to put our underlying asset as our stock ticker. And then for our option contract parameter, we're going to pass the option ticker in. Now, if you go to the Python docs and you look under snapshot, if you scroll down a little bit further, you can see that they have the options snapshot here. And we just have to pass in our underlying asset, which is our stock ticker. And then we have to pass in the option contract. Awesome. Up next, we're going to get our open interest. So all we're going to do is just parse our open interest here. If you want to take a look at all the attributes and methods that are available to option snapshot here, you can just use the dear function like you see. And then we have these right here, which will be useful to us. And then we're just going 
going to go into open interest here using object dot open interest. And then what I have here in our for loop is if there's no open interest for our option ticker, we're just going to skip to the next option in the list. And this is because later in the script, we'll get an error if we try to pull data that there's no open interest for. And then here we're just grabbing the implied volatility. And then to grab delta, we're just using dot Greeks dot delta. So if you look at dot Greeks right here, you can see the delta is available. So we can just parse that out as well. Up next, this whole block is all about getting date data. So first we're gonna grab an expiration date and we can see that that's coming back to us in a string format. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna format that as a date time. Now we can see that there in date time. So that's looking pretty good. And then next we're gonna get today's date time but when we create it, we're gonna exclude the hour and the minute data. So if you look here, it doesn't include hour or minute data. Now this next line of code was a bit of stack overflow magic. We're gonna get the previous business days timestamp. So this is recorded on a Saturday. I wrote the code on a Saturday. So Friday would be the previous business day. So we wanna make sure that that timestamp lines up. So we're taking today and then we're subtracting this custom business day function, which is supposed to give us the previous business day. So let's check it out. So depending on what country, then you might need to modify this code a little bit, but we can see that our previous business day here is on Friday. Then all we're gonna do is turn our previous business day from a timestamp into a string. And this is important because we're gonna use this string to feed into another function here shortly. Next, we're gonna request our last quote data here. We're gonna use dot get last quote, and then we're gonna pass our option ticker in. So if you click under quotes here and you scroll down, we have get last quote, we're using this, and then we're just passing in our option ticker. And if we look at that, object we can see it returns all this data here you can take a look with the deer function and then you can see it gives us a bunch of different data so we're just going to grab out the ask price and the bid price we're going to add them together and divide by two so we can get the mid price as well up next we have a very familiar block here we're going to go to this paginated endpoint list trades so if you go to the docs here and then go under trades we can go here under list trades we're just going to pass in our ticker and then we're also going to pass in a limit parameter it says the max is fifty thousand and the default is five thousand so i'm going to just bump this up to to 5,000 here, maybe that'll go faster. I think it might even go faster if you bump it up to 50,000. Then what this is gonna do here is just gonna go through and grab a bunch of trades for your option ticker. Now, if there's no trades for this option ticker, then we're just gonna continue in our for loop and skip to the next option ticker. So I went ahead, I ran that block of code. We can see our trades here, it's a list. So we can access the first item in the list, it's our trade. Then we can see all the different information that's available to us again using the dear function. Then once we have all the trades, we can can access the first item in the list. If you're building an app, you have to go through the validation. So I checked the other trade dates in the list, and I believe that the first item is the most recent trade. And you can validate that by looking at the different timestamps of the trades in the list. So just to show you a little bit about how that works, I looked at the first item timestamp here, and we can see that's you know on Friday. And then I looked at the third items timestamp here, and I can see that that's from the 16th, so about nine days ago. Then all we're doing here is we're just creating a string. And then all we're doing here is we're gonna grab the last price out of the first item in the trades list. Awesome, so up next, I have this try block here where we're gonna request our daily ag data for our options ticker. If it catches an exception because there's no volume, we're just gonna print out, hey, no daily data for this ticker here. And then we're just gonna continue to the next option for that ticker. If you look at the function get ags here, I made a video on this i'll link it up here just how to get historical option data but all we're doing is we're getting one day's worth of option data so it should just be a single candle and all from the last business day so now that i'm thinking about it you might want to do some validation just to make sure that the last trade date is equal to the previous business day that would just be a little data integrity check you could perform uh, you might want to think about that if you're going to build out an app but i'm just using the previous business day and if there's no volume then it's going to throw this exception so it won't even make it into the final results if there's no volume on the previous business day so now we have one candles worth of option data right here then we're going to grab out our volume and now what we're going to do is we're going to use the volume over the open interest and then our volume over open interest is what indicates in this example for unusual options volume. So now that we have all, all of that data for one options contract, 
we're gonna append it to our list called options data list, but we're gonna put it all into a list and then append it. So options data list is gonna become a list of lists. So I've gotta run our days to expiration here. So we can see here, it's a list inside of a list that has all of our options data for one options contract. And then once we've done all that, we're just gonna print a successful message here and our options contract ticker. So that was two for loops, one inside of the other. It's gonna go by each stock ticker. And then for each stock ticker, it's gonna grab all the options contract and do everything that we just went through. So at the end, you're gonna have options data list here and that's going to have a list of lists that has all of your contract data then what we're going to do is we're going to put that into a data frame called unusual option data and as you can see here it has all of our data going across horizontally then this here we're just going to name all of the columns and so you can see here this just renames all of our columns and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to sort our data frame by volume over open interest ratio and that's going to give us the highest volume over open interest up top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run it all together. So you can see it's gathering the data for the first ticker symbol. It's made it through a few options contracts. Now there's probably some inefficiencies because when you're grabbing all the trade data, you're really grabbing probably way too much information. One way to make the program a bit faster would probably be here in this trades. You don't need to grab all of the trades. You really just need to figure out how to grab the last trade. So as you can see, we've made it through our three tickers here. So let's take a look at the data. So here we have all of the unusual options data. There's too many columns to fit, so we can just look at a smaller subset. And then we can see here, we've sorted the data frame by volume over open interest ratio. So you can just get that data frame and then you can compare it here and then make sure all of your data lines up. Bam, and there you have it. Now you have your own unusual options volume scanner in Python. If you like the content, you can always buy me a coffee like leave me a comment let me know what you think subscribe to join the finance family watch out for those red candles let's go get these bags